Uh, if you're here for the first time, I'll take a few minutes and just kind of go over the chart and then I will get more in depth. My, my topic today is going to be about the different Gospels. Um, if you do not have one of these pamphlets, feel free to grab them. They're here for you. They're free. But you can utilize it and kind of look at the scriptures and where they, they are placed. There's an old saying when it comes to the scriptures. Let the scriptures lay where they lay and let them say what they say. Does that make sense? And what we have is a timeline. It's a tool that we use to do what 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 tells us to do. And we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, through his apostle, Paul, tells us to do this when we're studying the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. We all know the first word of this scripture. Study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I've been preaching since 2000, so it's at 22 years. A good part of those years, I was wrongly dividing the word of truth. Everyone that I've preached to before, I tried to call them and say, hey, we need to, we need to meet. <laughs> I want to go over some things that I did not know and share with you. Studying God's word, not just reading it, but studying it, knowing it, knowing the, the beginning, knowing in the, the, the middle part and the ending. Paul says, time passed, but now age is to come. Let me correct that. Jesus Christ gave Paul in the book of Ephesians the phrase time pass. Jesus Christ gave to Paul the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. He says, but now there's a dispensational change. Jesus Christ, through the apostle Paul, gave him the phrase ages to come. And just very quickly, past, present, future. How important is that? Very important. Because like an itinerary, if you have the times wrong and it's a different date on there, you're going to be all messed up. Amen? Study to show thyself approval to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And those are the three major divisions, time past, but now, ages to come. Last week, um, we talked about the Ark of the Cup or Noah building that Ark. And I pointed out Enoch. Remember we talked about Enoch last week? And we talked about his son. What was his son's name? Methuselah. Methuselah. <laughs> and on the timeline, that was early in the book. It was in Genesis. I walked out here saying, man, there was three points I really wanted to hit home, but I didn't. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to recap. And then we're going to look at these different gospels. So I'm multitasking. Y'all, can we, can, we, can we chew gum and walk down the street at the same time? Can we do it? Are you, are you guys with me? Go really quick to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. I left my cell phone at home. So it's 1038. Somebody let me know when we get to 11 o'clock, okay? We'll take our break at 11. Just shout, say, 11! And I'm going to move quickly. I'm going to move quickly, and we'll, we should have time for questions at the end. First Peter chapter 3. Somebody get Second Peter chapter 3. And someone get Genesis chapter 6. I want to drive this quick point home. And I, I want you to defend God with this, with this point I want to make for the rest of your life. I want you to defend God because people bash God when they talk about the flood. Amen. If there was a good, if he was so loving, well, why did he flood the earth? If God was so good, well, why did, well, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go into that. And I want you to defend God based on his word. Who's got first Peter three twenty? Can you read it? 
in a KJV Bible. Who's got it? Go ahead, Brother Eric. So the left long suffering of God, it said it waited. Can you read, read that part real slowly? Yes. Uh, the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. So, so in the days of Noah, God's long suffering, God was extremely patient. He just didn't want to just flood the whole world. He waited and waited. And we now know because of Methuselah, how many years did he wait, church? Nine hundred and sixty-nine years. Nine hundred and sixty-nine years. Almost a thousand years he waited. He was patient. He was long suffering. When people try to say that about him, say, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. God waited almost a thousand years. He prolonged it. How do I know that? Go to the next verse. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. When you got it, read it. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He's not slack concerning his promise. He told Enoch, Enoch told Methuselah, and Methuselah told Noah. They all had this revelation that God was going to flood this place. Could you imagine being in their shoes, knowing everywhere you walk around, it's all going to be underwater. It's all going to be flooded. My speculation is that's why Noah got drunk. That, that, that's, that's my speculation. Could you imagine dealing with that type of What's the word I'm looking for? Pressure. Pressure. We talk about a pandemic. Eight people on the globe inside of an ark. All his memories gone. So keep reading. There it is. His patience, his long suffering, he didn't want, he was not willing that any should what? Perish. He didn't want to kill everybody. He didn't want to destroy the world. To all the men in here, all the fathers, if someone broke into your house and was starting to do some evil things, to your family. Are you going to wait? What are you going to do, man? I know we got real men in here. I, I, I know y'all now. I know y'all now. They're going to try to do evil to your beautiful wives and your sons and your daughters. Uh-uh. What are you going to do, man? Fight. Let me show you what God was dealing with. Somebody go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Let's look at verse 5 through 7. Defend God. Defend him. When the naysayers say he's evil and if he was so good, why did he? And they try to bash him. Stand on his scriptures and you let them know for a thousand years men were doing this evil. And God was long suffering in his patience, giving them time to come to repentance. We're about to look at this word repentance. The word repentance does not mean just feel sorry. Repentance means a change of mind. In the Bible, the word means change of mind. It doesn't mean repent for your sins because we're going to see God repented. God didn't have any sin. Let's read it. Who's got it? Go ahead. God saw that the wickedness, the evilness, can, hold on. Can, can you imagine? No courts. No laws. No law enforcement. No constitutional rights. And they didn't have guns back then. It was no rules. It was anything goes. And God saw his creation. When he first created them, he said, it is good. 
But Adam and Eve sinned, the world, it was a fall. It's, we live in a fallen world. And God saw that, what did he see? Mm -hmm. And that's mankind. The wickedness of man, it wasn't a little, it was great. Keep going. We got to break this down, Sister Joy. Hold on. Every, what? Every imagination. Hmm. Every imagination, keep going. Of the thoughts. <laughs> What's the difference between the thought and imagination? That you, 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 very close, right? Every imagination of the thoughts, keep going. Of what? The heart of mankind. This was not just only a, a thought, it went from the mind, and now it's in the heart. When it's in your heart, guess what? You're gonna do it. <laughs> That's what we tell our children put your heart into it. Because if you put your heart into it, what? You're gonna do it. This is a matter of time. So every imagination of the thoughts, the, every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was what? Only evil. <laughs> Brother Mike, only evil. Only evil. Man, at this time, the, every, it was just evil. Only evil. Keep going. And it repented the Lord. It repented who? The Lord had a change of mind. That he made him. That he made him. Oh, man, I didn't make I gave him free will. Oh, Adam and Eve, oh, now look, the devil was just using. Keep going. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. It grieved him. Defend God. Whenever they start bashing him, it wasn't God doing it. It was man, the evilness, their thoughts. It was only. And God waited and he waited. God didn't want anybody to perish. He did not want to destroy it, but he, he had to do it. Does that make more sense? All right, chewing gum, walking at the same time. Another topic. <clears throat> you guys ready? Any questions on that so far? Go ahead. Can you give me an example? Um, well, like just believing, you know, um, Moses. Moses, yeah, Moses, and he was going to destroy, he went to God and he was like, Lord, no, like, right. you know, save my people and God changed the heart. Right. Good point. In time past, the law of Moses, that was a covenant, which is a contract with the nation of Israel. So God obligated himself through that covenant to do A, B, and C. He added the law because they were falling short on the contract. They were to obey him. There were consequences. If they obeyed him, he blessed them. If they disobeyed him, what happened? Punishment. And so it was a performance-based acceptance system. So yes, their obedience... <clears throat> could bring more blessings if they did what God told them to do in that dispensation. But in our dispensation, the but now, God is saying cease from your performance. Through history, no human being's performance was good in us but one, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. So we rest in his performance. We rest in him and now we are a member of the body of Christ. God is final. He is set with the body of Christ. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We are his forever. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We get it now. We'll get the new body later on, but all the blessings positionally, we are saved, we are sanctified, we are redeemed. Back then, it was a performance. we 
can change the heart of God in in an event that would take place or something like that. You know, if it was it was just all it's God's will is set, like we don't have the ability to change God's heart on something. The Bible says we can pray, we can ask, we can submit requests and supplications, but it doesn't guarantee that it will change God's will or his, his ways. You can ask. Yeah, performance. That's time passed. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't it, maybe I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. wasn't it like back then because we didn't, they didn't have the Holy Spirit? Right? That's a big part. Right? That's huge. Moses and some of the other ones were mediators between mm -hmm. the people and God. Mm -hmm. Now that we have, and so the depleted for mm -hmm. things happen, it's my understanding. Mm -hmm. So Moses would plead, like, please don't destroy them because mm -hmm. they're worshiping the holy calf or whatever. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's where the prayers come in. Yeah. Then again, God is, is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. He already knows whether or not we need it. Right. Very good point. That Holy Spirit is huge in leading and guiding us. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Yes. It's, it's predestined. But he also knows the whole story so that as we pray, he knows what's going to happen in the future as well. Right. So, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think there's like a, a, a thought process that if we pray, we can change the end. Mm -hmm. But think of it more as a book that we're the players within the book, and mm -hmm. he already has the end, but we're the characters within that book. The players. The mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. And there's still a story that goes on in that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 That is true, but also what Sister Kathy is saying is there is examples in the Old Testament where God changed the situation because of prayer and obedience. <clears throat> but he knew, but he knew. We didn't know, but he knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You have the right to pray and ask and request. But remember his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane? He said, not my will, but what? What, what ended up happening? <laughs> the man, the 100% man in Jesus, like, I'll remove this cup. I don't know if I want to go through. But God said, no, my grace is sufficient. Go, go through it. Very good questions. Go ahead, Sister Brenda. I have a question. So, Reverend Nelson wonders this, but, you know, we just went over from Genesis and says, you know, God saw how evil and wickedness was. And I have an idea, but mine says the Lord regretted that he had made human beings for God and repented. Mm-hmm. question. Very good question. My little answer is when we talk about free will, it is truly real with God. He gave humanity free will to love him, serve him, or to walk away from him and do their own thing. And God has been rejected. That's where it started, the rejection of God. And he said, here's the consequences. He told Adam and Eve, the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. And that was a spiritual death. Jesus on the earth said, let the dead bury the dead. And so 
Free will is real, whether we like it or not, and there's consequences. And my little answer is God saying, hey, okay, I created you to be this way and you want to go that way? Well, here's the consequences. And here's a bad example, but I'll give it to you. If you're trying to draw something, you're working on it, and you make a mistake, what do you do? Throw it away. Start over. That's rough, isn't it? That's rough. Go ahead. No, no. The body of Christ, it says we are sealed to the, day, to the day of redemption. He's not messing around. God promised his son heaven and earth. We're going to occupy heaven. The nation of Israel is going to op- occupy earth. And that's God's plan. What, for 2,000 years, God has been building and forming the body of Christ. And when we get to Romans 8, he's asking to talk about the creature we're going to be in the heavenly places. That is our final destination. That's the dispensation that we live in. And that's why Paul was able to say, in the day where God should judge the secrets of men according to my gospel, you're going to be judged according to Paul's 13 books for the body of Christ. And our final destination is in the heavenly places. Heavenly places. It's not a choice. It's God's plan and will for us to be in the heavenly places. Amen. Yes. Your choice is accepting the gospel, and that's my topic for today. Which gospel? Which gospel? Somebody ask, look at somebody and ask them, which, which gospel? Which gospel? Look, look, at, look at your neighbor and say, which, which gospel? I'm trying to provoke you. I'm trying to provoke you. What do you see right there? Canned goods. What's similar with all the canned goods? What do they all have? <laughs> True. What about the way they are packaged and canned? Are they all the same? But the way they look, they're all the same, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. What's the difference between the picture up and the picture down? Labels. If you want to can good with peas or corn, how do you know, based on the picture below, that you're getting the peas and the corn? Doesn't a label make a huge difference? I don't want us to be the kind of Christians like, eh, I don't know, just pick any. When our chart says the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the circumcision, the gospel of the uncircumcision, the gospel of grace, I want you to know the difference. Amen? And so I ask, which gospel? And this is my best example. You want to know which can good, what's inside of it based on the, the label. The words on the label means that's what's inside the can good. Amen? Look at this comparison. The gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of grace. We're going to go through all four, but let's just run through it real quick. The gospel of the kingdom, it was proclaimed by John the Baptist, Jesus, and the twelve. The gospel of grace is proclaimed by Paul. The gospel of the kingdom preached to the Jew only. The gospel of grace preached primarily to the Gentiles. The gospel of the kingdom required repentance, baptism, and faith plus works. The gospel of the kingdom requires faith alone plus nothing. The gospel of the kingdom content of message was Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. The content of the gospel of the grace is the message is the death and resurrection 
of Christ. Now, keep in mind, it's all truth, but we are rightly dividing the, the word of truth. The gospel of the kingdom began with John the baptizer and stopped during Acts period, Acts 15 and 11, resumes after the rapture. The gospel of the kingdom, I'm I'm sorry, the gospel of grace began with Jesus commissioned Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles. The gospel of the kingdom ended in Jewish unbelief will resume after the body of Christ is completed. It ends in Jewish belief and fulfills the great commission and prophecy. The gospel of the grace of God ends with the completion of the body of Christ composed of Jews and Gentiles, the rapture. The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel during Jesus' earthly ministry and into Acts. Future great, great Commission gospel once the body of Christ is complete. According to the gospel of the grace of God, our present gospel until the body of Christ is completed. Let's look at the gospel of the kingdom. I'll just read these for, for time's sake. The gospel of the kingdom, when did it start? Luke 16, 16. The law of the prophets were until what? John, what kind of word is until? Is that a time sensitive word? Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. Look at Mark 1, 6, 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the what? kingdom. Look at our timeline. You got John the Baptist here. Right after that, you got Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. Do you see it? And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. When the king is on the earth, the kingdom is at what? At hand. My water is at hand. Water gone. (laughs) I'm messing with y'all. I'm messing with you. Let me stop messing around. Fifteen. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The earthly kingdom is postponed. But when our dispensation of grace ends. Oh, this is just a commentary. That's not the scripture. When the the dispensation of grace ends with the resurrection rapture, the earthly kingdom will be offered and established again, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. So look at our chart. Gospel of the kingdom. You got the gospel of the circumcision, uncircumcision, the gospel of grace. What happens again after the rapture? Gospel of the kingdom. It will resume. It's almost like watching a movie. You hit the pause button. And then you hit pause again. The gospel of the kingdom will resume. Mark chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now the denominations, people who are Baptists. They are still following John. They don't rightly divide the scriptures because you'll see that today Christ chose Paul to be his apostle and there's different instructions. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17, Christ sent me not to baptize. Reading along here. The gospel of the kingdom was proclaimed by John the baptizer, Jesus and the twelve. It was the good news of the coming kingdom and required repentance, baptism and the faith and faith that Jesus was the prophesied Messiah. Okay, that's the gospel of the kingdom. It starts here with John the Baptist. Jesus preaches, his disciples preach it. It stops here with Paul, but then it will resume after the rapture. 
during the seven year tribulation period, books, Hebrews and Revelation, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached again. Let's move on to the gospel of, uh, of circumcision. These two are really easy here. The gospel of circumcision and the gospel of uncircumcision. What do you think that's going to be about just by the title? Circumcision. <laughs> Spiritually, who was circumcised? The Jews. And who was not? That's a big indicator right there. Turn to Galatians chapter 2. You don't have to turn to it. I'll read it really quick. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Two different men, Paul, Peter. Peter had the circumcised, Paul had the uncircumcised. The word gospel means good news. Good news to the Jews, good news to the Gentiles. Verse 9, and when James, Cephas, and John who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So they shook hands. They had a meeting. Paul, you go to the Gentiles. We're going to the Jews. That lasted for a few years. But what I'm going to show you, there was a fall and a diminishing of that program. Even Peter got under the leadership of Paul. In scripture. I'll show you that in just a minute here. Let me keep reading. Where did I leave off on 10? Okay, yeah. Only they, hold your hand, I'll get it. And they, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to his face. Here's part of your question. Paul is saying, I was stood him to his face. Uh, 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 Peter, whoa, 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 Peter, whoa, 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 whoa. Watch, 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 watch what it says here. I was stood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Can't do this, Peter. Twelve. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. So before these Jewish law, these Jewish leaders who was under the law, Peter was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, guess, guess what he did? Because the law said you don't eat with Gentiles. Amen. Paul said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. He withdrew and separated himself. Are you seeing this? Peter withdrew himself and separated himself from the Gentiles, fearing them which are of what? Circumcision. Break it down, Paul. Tell them how it's a new dispensation, Paul. Rightly divide, Paul. Let's see it. Verse 13. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Peter's, he's being a leader now. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Not good. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, the gospel for today and at this time, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So to your quick question, that was the beginning during the uncircumcision, the gospel of the uncircumcision. That was the turning of the requirements from the law into grace. The gospel of the uncircumcision is the same scripture where you see both of them are in play. 
really quick, Acts chapter 28 and Romans chapter 11. That's, it's going to really, it is really going to open up your eyes. This really helped me with rightly dividing. Can somebody get Acts chapter 28, verse 28? Somebody get Romans chapter 11, verse 11 through 15. Let's do Acts first. And what you're going to see on our timeline is during this Acts period after the cross, we call it a transitional book, there came a point where Acts 28, 28, you know that salvation, somebody say salvation. How important is salvation? Pretty important. He's saying it's going to the Gentiles. Look at the difference. Somebody read it. Acts 28, 28. It came a point, the last book of Acts, we see that the salvation of God, it is sent to the who? Gentiles, and they will hear it. That marks the beginning of the fall, somebody say fall, and diminishing. Let me show you that in scripture. Go to Romans 11. Who's got it? Somebody got it? Go. Romans chapter 11, verse 11 through 15. Read it out loud and kind of slow, please. Fall. What do I have here? What does that say? Fall. He's talking about the nation of Israel. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hold on. But rather through their fall, Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jews, they had a fall. Most pastors would never, ever, ever tell you that. Because then it's all Israel, Israel, Israel. And I love Israel too. But the word of God says they had a fall. They rebelled. But rather through their fall, keep going. Salvation is coming to the who? Gentiles. That's a dispensational change. Rightly divided in the scriptures. Keep going. God said, okay, I'm going to provoke my people. I'm going to save the Gentiles. You're going to reject me? Okay, well, I'm going to save the Gentiles. I'm going to provoke you. I'm going to bless them. Go ahead, keep going. Now, if the fall, that's three words of fall. The fall of them, keep going. Because of their fall, the whole world now, the gospel, the salvation is going to the world. They had a fall. Keep going. Diminishing. What, what word do I have right here? Diminishing. It was not just a fall, but a diminishing. The healings. They, they don't heal like they used to do. There's not a prophet going around healing like they used to. The law, the tithes, the speaking of tongues, all those things that people try to dive in today, it was a diminishing. Tongues will cease. Uh, uh, knowledge, it, it will cease. All these different things. It was a transitioning. That's why you have to rightly divide. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Now, God is not done with the nation of Israel, but today... They are, they have been cast away. Let me show you that. Keep reading, keep reading. For I speak to you Gentiles, mm -hmm. as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Paul is the apostle to the Gentile. He magnifies his office. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It got to the point where Israel was so apostate, they, they didn't believe that Jesus was who he was. Paul said, I just want to save some of you. He will settle for saving some of them. Keep going. Casting away. Today in the dispensation of grace, God has cast away Israel temporarily. Say temporarily, please. Say it three times so you can't say Jim, Jim said God's done with Israel. They're never coming back. They're stick a fork in them. No, 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 no. 
It is a temporary casting away. It is a temporary fall and diminishing. He is going to keep his promise, but it's going to happen in the kingdom after the tribulation period. I'm sorry, keep reading. Life from the dead. He's not done with him. He's not done with him. Amen? He's going to keep his promises. God is good. God is good. That's what I wanted to get. Thank you for participating. Oh, you got a hand. We're going to leave in 15 minutes, but go ahead. I'll, I'll cut it short. Go ahead. Questions are important. Yes. And what book was that in? What book was that in? First Corinthians. First Corinthians is part of the, the infancy part of his ministry. That was the early books that he wrote. As time went on, Paul used to heal. Paul water baptized. But as he got more revelation through increments, he had to write that Christ sent me not to water baptize. You can pray. You can pray and ask God to heal them. But if it doesn't happen, it's not because you don't have lack of faith. Today, he said, what abideth? What three things abideth today? Faith, hope, charity. Charity. He had to tell you what abideth because so many things change during the dispensation. That's why it's so important to rightly divide. And it's sad, some churches are healing churches, but during COVID, they were shut down. <laughs> and I'm not mocking, I'm not mocking. But they know that the healing that was going on in, the, in time past is not the same you see in but not. Am, am I right or am I wrong? But God can, in his will, he can do miracles. He can still do miracles. But it's not the same as it was. It can. It's not because of he's anointing a person to do that. So it still happens, just not in the way it happens. Yes. yes. The disciples healed. Paul raised a man from the dead. Have y'all read that? But he, he went on to say towards the end of his ministry, <clears throat> I had to leave that brother sick. He couldn't heal anymore. He told Luke, hey, take some wine for your stomach, man. I... He couldn't do it anymore. Throughout, they said it was close to 33 years of his ministry. That it, it, it diminished. It changed. And so don't be the Christian to just get caught in that when God is, it is, and I hate this, well, I don't say I hate this word. It is a progressive revelation. Things progress. God never changes, but his ways and his will, it, or his ways and his word has changed throughout time. So much to where Paul had to say, this is going to cease, that's going to stop, but what's going to remain? Faith, hope, and charity. And God will keep his promises to Israel. It's going to happen. <clears throat> Go ahead. Hold it. That's why he says, walk by and not by. Back then, you seen all these things. But today, no, 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 just walk by faith. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking, faith, hope, and love, things that we really have no control over. Like, yeah. like we're, I don't want to say powerless, but almost. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And this is real Christianity. You don't like it? Hey. This is what God is doing today. He's saving you by grace. You're going to show even like all of that stuff that was going on, like all the, the miracles and the bringing people back from the dead, they still didn't believe. Yeah. Even by seeing it, there's something that still didn't believe. Good point. So, Jen, you're new at coming to church? 
<laughs> Great point. With all the miracles, with all the signs, with all the wonders, a lot of them still didn't believe. Even Jesus, he said, he, he looked at his disciples, are you, you going to leave me too? He made one comment and people started walking away from Jesus. He, he told his disciples, you guys going to leave too? Well, what did Peter say? He said, no, you have the words to eternal life. We ain't leaving you, Jesus. Very good point. Should we even take a break? Should we just keep going? Ten more minutes? Keep going? God is good. It, is, is this good or is it? And there's no stupid questions because we all are learning, amen? And I don't have all the answers. I'm going to say it two more times. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, amen? God is good. Ah. <sighs> You know what? I wanted to finish this too. Go to Acts chapter 9. Brother Jared, is, is it better to plan for bring more than you can? It's better to have more than a, too, too little, right? I, I'm going to get to Romans. I want to get to Romans 8. Luke. Luke wrote Acts. It's a continuation of his book. Acts chapter 9. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of mid-Acts dispensationally? Mid-Acts? We call it mid, I'm a mid-Acts dispensationalist, which means in the middle of Acts, Acts chapter 9, we see the ball rolling where God began to change the dispensation. So it's a question of start, finish, when. We just say mid because uh, the, the example is, when did Sister Keisha leave the house? Well, she got in a car, she pulled the car back out of the garage, she let it warm up for 10 minutes, and then she left. So to be accurate, we just say mid-acts because Jesus Christ saves Paul, and that, that starts the ball rolling of this new dispensation, <clears throat> rightly dividing and everything. Let's look at the accounts here. Acts chapter 9, verse 3 through 7, and somebody get Acts 26. He's going to talk about this event where the, where the Lord Jesus Christ saves him from heaven. Please say from heaven. It is not during Christ's earthly ministry. It's after the death, burial, and resurrection. Christ is in heaven, and he still, even though he had 12 apostles, he still saves this one here. Go ahead, Acts chapter 9, verse 3 through 7. Anybody? As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around above him a light from heaven. Did it say suddenly? I'm going to give you a start, a starting. Uh, I want to show you this event, the starting of it, and how it's going to be very similar to the rapture. Look at the, let's compare these two events. When Paul is saved for the first time, and when Christ comes in rapture. So the, we use the word unexpectedly and suddenly Jesus Christ appears to Saul. Keep reading. And he fell on the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why you persecutest me? Okay, stop right there. So unexpectedly Jesus Christ appears to Paul. Unexpectedly Jesus Christ will descend from heaven. Unexpected. Do you know when he's going to do it? No. Saul didn't know that he was going to get saved that day. So unexpectedly, it's going to happen. Keep going. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the press. Mm -hmm. and, he and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it 
shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay. So, unexpectedly, Jesus Christ appears to Saul. Unexpectedly, Jesus Christ will come back and descend from heaven. Saul falls to the earth when he hears Jesus. Instead of falling to the earth, the body of Christ will rise to meet the Lord in the air. Do y'all see that? Unexpectedly, Christ comes, Paul falls, but the body of Christ, when the Lord comes, we're not going to fall, we're going we're to rise, we're going to be caught up. Saul hears a voice from heaven. Only Saul can understand the words of Jesus. Only Saul can understand it. When Christ comes back, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And only those that are in the body of Christ will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So similarities. <clears throat> Unexpectedly, suddenly Christ appears, saves Saul. Unexpectedly, the rapture will happen. There's a sound. Paul hears a voice. There will be a sound with the rapture. The trump will blow with the voice of the archangel. Only Paul can understand the words that was coming from heaven. Only the body of Christ will be raptured up. No one else will hear the sound of the trumpet. I thought everybody will hear and see. I didn't say that. I said only the body of Christ will go. Not everybody's going. Not everybody's going. Acts 26, look at verse 12 and 14. He's talking about the same event, but he gives you a little bit more details. Keep going. Okay, hold it there. Midday, around noon, this brightness, he said it was brighter than the sun. That's pretty bright. But it shined on him and them that were what? With him, right? Right? Is that what it said? Keep going. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. OK. And so only Paul can understand that. It says in other version that they were speechless. They, they didn't understand. But only Paul could understand what Jesus Christ was saying. My last slide is on our chart. After the gospel of the kingdom, after the gospel of the circumcision, the gospel of uncircumcision, the gospel of grace. We know that one, right? <laughs> we know that one really well. There will be the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, go to Isaiah 2, 1 through 4. We're winding down here. We're winding down. Did I go over the gospel of grace? I skipped over it, didn't I? Okay, we, we went over it earlier. All right, the last one, Isaiah 2, Isaiah 2, verse 1 and 8. So on the timeline, during the seven-year tribulation period, and right before Christ comes back, that gospel of the kingdom, it is preached, and, and in that kingdom, look how it's going to be. This is the tip of the iceberg. Read Isaiah. It's going to give you a really good picture. Somebody got that? Isaiah 2, verse 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. uh, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last days. It shall come to pass. Is that a time sensitive word? Our time chart? Keep going. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Okay, in this kingdom, the mountain, it, it's going to be established. Okay, keep going. Mm -hmm. All the nations. This is going to be the command center. You see this picture right here in the kingdom? Christ is going to set up his kingdom right there in that, in that area. Keep going. And many people shall go and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, mm -hmm. the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. Mm -hmm.
there's a key point right there. The law, it will be reinstated. The kingdom will be established. We go back to the law. Dispensation of grace over. And if you go to uh, Romans chapter 11, God is going to write his law in his people, the nation of Israel. He's going to deliver them from iniquity and they are going to keep that law perfectly because the king will be there and he's going to change their heart and their minds. He's going to write Jeremiah. He's going to write his laws in their hearts and their mind. Did you finish it? No more war. No more war. His kingdom is going to be a kingdom of peace. Peace will reign in God's kingdom forever and ever and ever. Defend God. Why is God letting this happen? Why? It's all going to be taken care of. And his nation, the nation of Israel, they're going to reign on the earth and us, the body of Christ, will be in the heavenly places. Perfect. Perfect. Even better than it was in the garden. Any questions, comments? I know I threw a lot at you. <laughs> Do you think some of the long suffering that happened with Moses, or um, at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, that's what Jesus said while he was on the earth. He says, like in the days of Noah, violence and all the things. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know we hate seeing this. I I know we hate being a, you know, but the Bible is true. So it comes to the point where you're like, man, I want things to change. I want things to get better. But the Bible's already said how it's going to be. And what is going to happen? You don't want to be against the Bible, right? So what do you do is you build yourself up on the doctrine. You know how to rightly divide. You can bring this grace message. And God's grace can save individual sinners. That's why we have a church. We learn it and we go out and we share and we bring others here to learn it. To get on page with God. And we work it out, amen? Nobody's perfect, but we're working it out. We're getting better. We're getting better. Any questions, more questions or comments? And remember, the, the Gospels that we talked about today, it's on the chart. And just like the canned goods, you want to know the, t- the labels, what it, what it entails. Unrestricted gospel. I mean, restricted to the Jews, time past, but now unrestricted for all people. All people. No more questions, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for showing us how to rightly divide the scriptures and getting more understanding, getting more knowledge so that we can apply this, we can live it out in the details of our life. And Lord, if there's anyone here or anyone listening on YouTube who is not saved, if they don't understand, if they don't know where they're going to spend all eternity, Your word tells us or gives us the opportunity to make that decision. With the understanding, according to the Bible, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because we have sinned, we all deserve the punishment, which is hell. But the good news is for today, our gospel, the good news for today is that Jesus Christ came down live the perfect life and he died for all of our sins he was buried 
and he rose again the third day. Everything that is wrong with us, if we believe that Jesus Christ paid it all and you have forgiven it all based on his word, based on his performance, if we believe that message, the Bible says we are saved from eternal destruction. We're saved from the debt and the penalty of sin. And one day we will live in the heavenly places forever and ever. If you are not saved, if you can make that decision, the, the choice is yours. And if you have made that decision, I want to welcome you to the family of God. We ask it all in Jesus' name. We all sit together. Amen. Amen. Amen.